people to the next level. <laughs> Not the <to> cover. <laughs> cool. It's gonna be over. That's a whole other message. But That's like it. what you say. Um, we the sale of your apostleship. Yeah. The more we grow up and the more we receive the the ministry, the more. Um, I don't know. You said it's your not said it's your apostle, but the more you come, the more you come into it. Yeah, because when you look at Paul, he wrote to the church of Corinth, and he said, "My measure is increased because of your measure has increased." Mm -hmm. Look at it in Second Corinthians ten. He said, "I can the, my influence, my metron is increased because it's increased with you." Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So is that increase just what it does? Does it make you outspan outspan the region of probably where you started? Well, it makes you grow from Jerusalem, Judea, to Samaria, and the most part. You, you, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to move physically. It brings more of a release. Huh? It more of a release. More of a release. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it gets the people in, in. Okay, you have a local assembly, and they begin to grow up in the things of God. They begin to reflect the message of the house, the yeah. culture of the house. And all of a sudden, it begins to filter out from their lives, and it touches their metrons. I told you we were going to talk about it last we mentioned it on, on Wednesday, and I said, I need to bring that in, in a message to show them through scriptures how, and that's really the very essence of evangelism. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily going door to door. Mm -hmm. It's a life that is replicated yeah, upon yes. the teachers right. in the house. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem. <clears throat> because we don't have enough people that are convinced that the message that we possess mm -hmm. is authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be why it's, why it's so important to uh, to, you know, just as Jesus said, to do the work of an evangelist, because if, if we understand as evangelists what the work really is, and it's to gather the people, to gather the people to, uh, so that they can be, uh, uh, come into a place of unity, a place of maturity, and a place of intimacy with, with, uh, with the, uh, the fivefold ministry, to raise them up. Mm -hmm. And if they don't understand, uh, if people don't understand what uh, an evangelist actually does, what happens is, we will never gather the people to the sound of what, what's being said. Exactly. And then, you know, not to try to single out the evangelist, but it's very it's very important because the evangelist is the voice of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they the voice. I mean, they carry the message outside the four walls. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they train up the people that's in, in the body and develop within them a zeal and a passion for the things of the Lord. And not just for them to get it and sit on it all they can. Mm -hmm. But to, trans to transfer their growth, to take that, that, that same spirit that's in the house and take it abroad. Amen. So rise up, yes. evangelists, yes. Yes. wherever, wherever, wherever you are. <laughs> but we, we, we stopped off at the fivefold and we made an analogy. It's, it's well known those are watching. But apostle is the thumb, prophet is the forefinger. Evangelist is the middle finger. The pastor is the ring finger. The teacher is the little, the smallest finger. The, the, the thumb, which speaks of the habitation that God wants to bring, because the thumb, the, the five, the apostle is able to touch all the four. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see that, that's the way it goes. And so it's able to make connection with all with the, the other four giftings. Mm -hmm. Giftings, not offices. Mm -hmm. Giftings. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference. They're not offices. I know. Uh, we've been taught that they're offices, and it, it, it creates an elitism mentality. You know, like you got to get, you know, there's a certain place, but it's it's by election only. It's a sovereign uh, election. It's not because of uh, a promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like you start off with a particular gift, and then because you was proven uh, worthy at a certain stage of development, now we're going to move you from pastor to apostle. So which means that that would put a person in a, in a grace I mean, that would put a person in a position that they don't even have the grace for. Exactly. Right. Because we felt like it was time to move them on. And so we tried to put them in something that they really don't even fit. Right. Yeah. You know, I know people, I tell them, I said, uh, I know a couple of guys I talk to now. And I said, man, are you a pastor? He said, well, one of them accepted the role as a pastor. I said, don't never be ashamed of being a pastor. Amen. Because every leader is supposed to be a pastor. Amen. You know, but every leader is not a pastor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so you, that, I mean, because that's the heart of the sheep, and you don't want to lose that in trying to build numbers. Amen. So, we see that the fivefold ministry is an analogy, and one of the things we said for each one of them, from apostle to teacher, we, we gave you habitation, visitation, proclamation, cultivation, and revelation, which is on another date, we'll, we'll expound. But these fivefold ministry was given to perfect man in God's image mm -hmm. by revealing Christ. Not to be revealing a person's uh, 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 
built on uh, personalities and performances and politics and all those other things, even prophecies can be used, can be included in that four that I get, because a lot of people base their, their um, validation to prophecy. And that's, you got too many voices out there sending mixed signals. <laughs> and that would desecrate a local assembly. You know, you can go and you can sit, you can go to another ministry or you can visit a ministry and that apostle prophet put an honor on you that's contrary to the local assembly. <laughs> and cause a big problem. That's why the Bible says you got to know them and labor among you. If you have to step outside your local assembly, I feel this, to find validation in the ministry that you sense that's churning on the inside of you, on, that man. you feel that there's a, a little bit taking place in yeah, you, and you on, feel... You feel the birth pains or something new on the horizon, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to step outside of those you serve and labor with, blood, sweat, and tears, then to have uh, somebody outside of that work to confirm it. Come on. You're in trouble. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you for that, um, Church yeah. Smith. <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah, the best thing you can tell a person like that is be patient. Be patient. Mm -hmm. I very seldom, very seldom, <laughs> I can recognize a certain thing on a person, and I can see a, a, the the, the gifting of the, pro the prophet on them. But I, I, it's ways you can do it. God God will give you subtle ways to to say a thing without disclosing, you know what I'm saying, the gift itself. You know, you can, and then down the line, as they mature, they'll figure it out. But too many people get placed in a certain place, uh, position or a certain gifting or a certain metron, and then they get there prematurely and their character is not correct for it. That's Which is a dangerous right. place. It's very dangerous. Amen. Because after that happens, if the character is not correct and somebody places a label on someone to the fivefold ministry, that becomes a facade. There's no word that's going to, it on, only God. Because now it becomes a, 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 a thing that they put upon themselves and, and as a cloak of their insecurity. And then when somebody ever speak anything contrary to what that idol is in their heart to read, it ain't happening. They're going to fight you tooth and nail. Uh -uh. And then you're going to try to take away their mantle, so to speak. No, no. They're going to be fighting you and everything. Talking about, who do you think you are? We've had them here. That's, that's why some come and they'll sit and they'll say, well, I like this word in the house. And then after they sit around and then you don't honor them or promote them. Then all of a sudden they're ready to go. They take their toys and leave. But that was something real good that you said last week uh, 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 when you was when you was talking about that, when you was when you was saying, you mentioned something about uh, if you if you if, you know just like about the you called the no name prophet or the the prophet that didn't have a name versus the prophet that when a person was in relationship with God, God had a prophet to speak to him that had a name, mm -hmm. but when a person that uh, that was out of relationship with God, God would have a person to speak who they would call the man of God. Yeah. I don't know if anybody went behind me to check it, but I even went behind myself to check it. <laughs> and it was true. Normally, when God is speaking to you, he has people who has a, a reputation with you. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at some of the prophets that spoke to some of the kings, the prophet that was sent to them, they knew them. Yeah. In fact, they had a prophetic embassy connected to their yeah. kingship. Right. And whenever they needed a word from God, they knew who to go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You know, Saul knew Samuel. Um, David knew Nathan mm -hmm. and he had another prophet that we don't hear about Edo that was another seer that was a seer for him so you, when you look at stuff like that you say wow and Jeremiah had Barak mm -hmm. so when you, you know so there you, you can't and, and I and then you look at those who was rebels uh, like Jer Jeroboam <laughs> you know it, it was the man of God and the first Kings 13 came to him and said the man of God came to him because God knew say, I couldn't send to him because Jeroboam had a despised he despised God's structure that he made a whole counterfeit system. And so he just took it upon himself to go in there and offer him altar incense. So God said, I can't send my voice to him who's, who, he's, he, who he is comfortable with. So I have to go outside of the system and send a voice to him. Because he's already rebelling against the, uh, the system that's established. So. so when you're in uh, right relationship with your local assembly, you don't really need a word from somebody outside of your house. It enhances it. If you get a word outside of the house, I'm not saying that you can't go to a church service and a man of God or woman of God call you out. I'm not saying that. But it'll, ne it'll build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll build on. God is line upon line, precept mm -hmm. upon precept. <coughs> so if God is speaking to you, it won't take you left. Because you, the only reason it take you left because you want to go left. Right. 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 Yeah. 
So in other words, when you said because you want to go left, then that means that it has to be something in your heart that he speaks to. Yeah, he speaks to the idols. Like we, we shared when we did the spirit of divination. It's the idol that's in your heart. That's what he said. The word was, and you, they, they, the prophet going to speak to that um, idol. That's powerful because I think about, uh, you know, how I talk about making the crooked path straight. And, and when God knows your heart, you know, it's just like he doesn't see the outer appearance, but he knows the heart. And when God knows that your heart is right, he will align things. He will have somebody to speak a word to realign what needs to be done in your life to bring you to the place. Yes, yes. Yeah, see, the thing, that, I'm going to tell you, one of the most destructive th thoughts that we have in the church is that we can't have, we can't become common. With with a voice, right? So we, you know, what I'm saying. So it, put it this way: uh, I need a different voice than what I'm used to. So we <laughs> become uncommon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, let me see how to put it again. Uh, 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 I'm trying to get it so I can get bring it across. It's okay if you're if you're a pastor or fivefold minister gift and you have a local assembly to have a working relationship with a bona fide, authentic voice. Or a prophetic voice. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In times past, say, well, you don't want to get too close because you want them to be able to hear from God. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't never heard that before? Yes. Yeah. 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 And now y'all looking at me y'all like you never heard it, but that's what they said. They said, you know what? If you want them to hear from God for you, you got to make sure there's a distance between you and them. Mm -hmm. And that is the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. According to the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, just because you have a relationship with somebody don't mean they're going to become too familiar with you. Amen. If you're walking in the spirit of honor, spirit of submission, mm -hmm. That's it. the yeah. company you Amen. keep, Amen. as long as it's positive, yeah. don't defile what God wants to bring to you. Amen. You get what I'm Amen. saying? Amen. I know because that was one of the things that we all operated came through in the 90s, it, it would say, hey, you know, there's a spirit of familiarity, <laughs> you know, so you want the prophet to be able to hit it pinpoint, so don't tell him much, <laughs> and I'm not saying that as a leader, you go and tell them everything, what I'm saying, you develop a relationship so that they have a vested interest, we get people to speak prophetic things to us, and they have no uh, invested interest, nope. and if you do anything with what you heard, so they just come and give you diverse kinds of seed to speak a prophetic word to you, and they go on about their business, yeah. <laughs> But they, if a person prophesied to you, they need to be responsible for the outcome. Amen. 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 And that's normally why I come and bring people here. Yeah. Yeah. I want to move on. Go ahead. But that's normally why you bring uh, people here and you hear the words is, that's being said. And you know, you already know the people that, that uh, you have here in this congregation. And what you normally do is judge the words that people are saying concerning the people to know how right or off the word is. Yeah, it's not like I'm gonna give him a crash course over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, when you come in here, make sure you, when you see gear, give him that type of word because you know you really got some stuff going. That, that's not what I do. Right. But because our hearts get knit together, they won't come in and just throw their weight around or come in and throw <coughs> different types of doctrine, strange yeah, doctrine right. around. Mm -hmm. They'll come alongside and compliment the overall uh, plan of the house. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to superimpose their belief system or anything, they'll just come in and submit and then join alongside with what's already built to, to enhance the house. Y'all got that? Yeah. All right, let's move on, please. Isaiah 51. Let's go to Isaiah 51. Do we have a 